Zali, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable uh, Katuchewe, for uh, sympathizing with our people, including these journalists. No one is spared from hunger because the income levels have been affected by the high prices of commodities. No one is spared. Some of them, I used to see them driving. Now I don't know what they are using. Uh, because, <laughs> yeah, no, if I'm lying, they can, they can say for themselves. So what you are saying does not just affect the poorest of the poor. The, the, the economy is biting and uh, everyone is affected. I will now invite an honorable uh, member from uh, Chilubi Highland. He's uh, a very good swimmer, but he's also a very brave uh, character. You will speak very briefly, because we don't want to keep you too long here, on the issues of uh, the fights against corruption and uh, governance issues. Honorable Fox. Uh, thank you very much. May I also write on uh, the protocol that has been said already. Uh, may I recognize the presence of the um, uh, leader of the opposition in parliament, <coughs> who is at the same time an MCC, also recognizing the other MCCs present. I take recognizance of um, uh, fellow members of parliament. I also recognize the presence of our um, uh, fourth estate, the media. And may I simply say welcome to this presser. Um, I think he, I am dumbfounded, I'm surprised, so shocked that uh, on the backdrop that we'll be having, uh, is it democracy summit? I don't know why you are calling it, what we are calling it. Um, when we talk about corruption, which is one of the agenda items that I think would be tackled in that particular uh, summit, which is also connected to economic governance. Uh, let me just say social and economic governance. Uh, in the structure of fighting, uh, fight against corruption, there, is, there are a lot of stakeholders, and one of the stakeholders is a whistleblower. And if a whistleblower cannot be respected, and the use of should be intimidated whenever they blow the whistle. Then I don't know where we are going. What's still, if a whistle brower can be intimidated at presidential level, it's quite alarming. When you read what executive powers of the president in articles 90, 91, and 92, you find that the president is supposed to actually be the champion for a fight against corruption. And I think any effort that... Um, as, as, as the uh, uh, whistleblower brings, he's supposed to be investigated. And I think he, when the president speaks, he speaks uh, what is supposed to be called policy. And I think the president should realize that within the constitutional powers, he carries a lot of a big, a big stick, I would say, such that he, once he comments on a particular issue, before it is even exhausted, it means that. He, uh, the institutions of governance are going to be intimidated. What I'm referring to is the president's reference to Munia, as quoted by uh, uh, Honorable Munia Zulu, as quoted by the Diggers newspaper. If indeed the president said what he said, then I think that uh, we need to reflect on the kind of leadership we have in the nation. Because uh, the president is supposed to be receptive to things that come through the whistleblower. And I think an allegation should be treated within the particular status that it has. It means that if this is our attitude, then we are all simply saying that we, we are not on, own, on moral high ground toward even this summit. It does not fit us. We don't have the impetus for it. We do not have the credentials toward the, 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 the democracy <coughs> summit. Because the democracy summit goes hand in hand with rule of law. Democracy summit goes hand in hand with fighting corruption, which is linked to economic governance. But I think I would like also to appeal to the president that uh, if indeed yeah, he said that I've instructed the, the Minister of Finance to sue Honorable Munia Zulu, it's unfortunate. It's very unfortunate. The president is dropping the, the, the standards of our democracy to, 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 to sink so low to the lowest levels that it has never been is interfering in a lot of things. The president should have allowed this thing to unfold itself than start intimidating. Munia is, is a citizen. 
whom he needs to protect. But the, for the president to be going at the neck of, uh, you know, uh, a, a, you know, a citizen who is just a whistleblower in this case, what is supposed to be done is that we called on two ACC. I was there with him uh, to to start investigating. ACC has issued a very good statement where they have invited uh, the the people that blew the whistle. That if I tell you have information, then bring forth the information. And I think we should leave it to that uh, to that level than start intimidating each other in this nation. I think we are all equal stakeholders when it comes to national matters. I am a shareholder. The president is a shareholder. Munia equally is a shareholder in, in, in this nation. So I think he, my appeal is that he, we need to allow citizens to speak freely. Let us not have this, uh, you know, summits for grandstanding purposes. We need to have these summits that they speak to the real issues that are happening and it should improve our democratic status as we bargain on the globe. I think I rest my case on that one and I think he, uh, the president should pay att more attention uh, into him not abusing the law through uh, you know, inviting his friends to be working part of, part of the government system than abusing citizens in, uh, through that manner. I rest my suitcase. Thank you so much, uh, <laughs> Honorable Fouve. As usual, we appreciate your submission, and indeed you are just talking about the aspect of protecting whistleblower growers. And the law is there, to provide, which provides for whistleblowing. And the ministers are human beings. It's not the first time that accusations are being leveled against, leveled against ministers. We were in government as well, and this, uh, this is not new. We are the president who had to leave his dependable ministers, based on allegations. He never came out and said, no, those who are accusing my ministers, let, they, 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 need to be, they need to be taken to court. No. He listened to the people, and he listened to the whistleblowers. So, Honorable Fube is spot on, because uh, we shouldn't set different rules for citizens. There is no one who is above the law. And submissions. What remains is for me to invite the leader of opposition to sum up uh, what has been discussed uh, here. Uh, but before I do that, uh, here we just have very brief ones. And I'll start with the one that uh, Honorable Tembo uh, just finished. Minister Tony Blair, <laughs> sir, your consultant services are needed in Britain. Because Britain now, uh, after the Brexit, requires the senior citizens like you to navigate the, 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 the uh, Britain uh, after the Brexit to a sad position. We are not ready for your recolonization program here. We are not. And if you think you are going to... Zambia does not belong to only those people that you are dealing with in government today. They are just there for a tour of duty which will soon come to an end. So we want to respect you. We don't want to use the language that was used on you before when you were in office, because you are a retired man. <coughs> but to start getting our civil servants and our top government officials reporting to you is not something we are going to tolerate and accept. So our humble advice to those of you who are near him, advise him to take his consultant services back to England. Yesterday we were considering a report from the Budget and Planning Committee which reflected on the performance of the budget, the last, the second and um, uh, 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 final quarter of 2022. In there are issues that have been raised. I'll just pick one. You know that there are your fellow Zambians who are suppliers and contractors who have given services and different goods to government and are being owed others huge sums of money, others small sums of money. But this is the money that is supposed to be in our circulation in the economy. The Minister of Finance contracted Price Hotels and the other auditing firms to do audit on these suppliers. They've finished their work and they've been paid. 
more than 16 million. Watch. Where, why are we still waiting for this audit report? And why are you ignoring our people whose money won't be the same by the time you'll be paying them? If there are those that didn't supply, those that didn't perform, we say take appropriate action, but don't punish those who genuinely uh, provide the service to government. And just lastly, you saw the videos that are circulating regarding this huge light scandal. We said it here that we want thorough investigations that will get everybody involved, big and small culprits. We saw a few people fired. And normally when people are arrested who are part of the scam or a cartel, those are the source of information for the police. Now, what happened is there are suspects who are giving information to the police to say there is this and this one and this one who are still yet to be caged. They were being ignored. It had to take one of them to be loud from the cells, <laughs> shouting from the cells to say, look, we have given you this information about FBCD. And the names are being mentioned. And I said it here, that they don't punish junior police officers, leaving the big officers that should have given them orders to, to involve themselves in, their, in, their, in their, those illegal activities. You heard the man shouting on his voice, top of his voice. We don't support the, 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 the tribal sentiments that he uttered, but the key in what he was saying is that why are you why are you only punishing those who seemingly to be the, 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 the easiest targets and leaving the big fish? So it's these big fishes that you want to see and corruption moving and arrest. Others are getting you just bump into a Chinaman and you are given shares and you are a shareholder in a mine in Mukushi. You avoid that. So challenge them. So instead of just focusing on one Munia, <coughs> let's all and face this whistleblower blowing from the cells <laughs> to say, please, even if I'm in the cells here, follow some people that we were rooting with the soldiers. <coughs> Why? What more do you need? Because all of you who have seen those videos, you know what that gentleman was talking about, the council chairperson for Mwense. He mentioned the names and some officers. So information is there. Why you fail to act on it? Finally, it's just to appeal to these colleagues, honorable ministers who have been accused. We were also ministers. in government, serving in government of President Ed Gabon as our president. You saw how ministers, based on allegations, were relieved of duties. Our colleague, Dr. Chitabi Chilufi, was former Minister of Health. Honorable Chimbakam CK. It was allegations coming from the opposition. You didn't hear the president go for those that were raising allegations. <laughs> he went for the ministers and said, exonerate yourselves. It was not one minister, but many. What's so special about these ministers who have been alleged to have taken something? What's so special about them? They are not angels, they are human beings. So if they are, want, they, 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 they are, they, they, they are not found wanting, they will exonerate themselves. But we don't need the president to come in in the manner he has come in. I'll leave the rest for the leader of opposition to conclude. But just to thank you once again, our colleagues from the media, for being patient um, and being with us this time because we were disturbed. Honorable leader of opposition, it's now your time to conclude this uh, briefing um, and close the briefing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Member of Central Committee.
and uh, Honorable Member for Shuangandu, Honorable Stephen Kampiongo, former Minister of Home Affairs. I recognize the presence of uh, Honorable George Chisanga, who is the chairperson for our Committee on uh, Justice, and indeed our legal chairperson, uh, chairman for uh, legal uh, in our Central Committee. A uh, member of Parliament for Mansabombwe, I recognize you. A uh, member of Parliament for uh, Chilubi, I also recognize you. A uh, member of Parliament for Feira, I recognize you. A uh, member of Parliament uh, uh, for Lapula, I recognize you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, members of the media, it's a good afternoon. Uh, very briefly, I just want to reflect uh, upon uh, what my uh, colleagues have already talked about. And the starting point is the uh, summit on democracy. There's been a lot of excitement and uh, a lot of uh, uh, statements made, especially from our colleagues on the right, the UPND, regarding this summit. The starting point, ladies and gentlemen, our expectation as members of parliament, expectation as Zambians, was that there was going to be a ministerial statement coming from the Minister of Foreign Affairs to tell the Zambian people about this very important event. The Minister of Foreign Affairs was expected to deliver a ministerial statement to tell us about this high-level visit by the U.S. Vice President. During that time, members of parliament, who are representatives of the people, were going to have occasion to interrogate and ask some of the questions that our people are asking regarding the visit and indeed regarding the summit. Had that happened, most of this excitement that we are seeing would not have been there. We are, however, surprised that um, members of the UPND, ministers and MPs, decided not to talk about the summit on the floor of the House, but they came to this particular room, uh, you know, immediately they left Parliament to come and talk about the summit amongst themselves. Some of our members attempted to come in and maybe try to get some ideas regarding the summit. They were not allowed to come in. And this is where the problem comes in. We believe that uh, this summit, there may be more to it about this summit than meets the eye. Why is it that the ministers found it uh, prudent to come and talk about the summit here in the media center and not on the floor of the house? I'm sure our concerns uh, are in that case uh, justified. Why would the ministers not want to talk about this important event on the floor of the house and instead of talk about it at the media center amongst themselves? Ladies and gentlemen, it's not a secret that in the recent past, the U.S. government has made their foreign policy very clear. They've signed a number of executive orders. Some of the orders speak to tying the LGBT to foreign assistance. The other ones will talk about countering Russian influence in Africa, including China's influence. And this is exactly what we wanted to find out from the acting leader of government business on the floor of the House before we were interrupted. Our interest was one. In the recent past, His Excellency the President of this Republic, President Haka in the Hichilema, came out clearly and said he was against LGBT rights. The Vice President of this Republic, uh, uh, Honorable Madam Mutayana Lumango, equally came out very strongly on the floor that uh, the, the government is against LGBT rights. Now, look at this. On the other hand, on the American side, I've just told you about the executive orders that were signed. So you have two different positions coming, one position from government, which is a position that will welcome. When you talk about uh, geopolitical relations, our government through the president and the vice president came out very clearly to say we'll continue strengthening relations with Russia and China. On the other side, the Americans have passed a law. They are calling the Countering Malign Russian Activities Africa Act. Our interest as members of parliament, we wanted to find out how our government was going to interact with the U.S. government, uh, which is co-hosting this particular event, 
now that they have these two very different positions. That was our interest. And I think up to now, our interest is that now that Zambia has made its position clear on LGBT <coughs> through presidential announcement, pronouncement, and uh, the vice president, what sort of interaction will they have with Vice President Kamala Harris when she comes? Is our president going to maintain the position that is given? Or is he going to conveniently change that position to allow the summit to go? Are we ready, as government put up other measures, to try and compensate for what this country is likely to lose? Because America has made this position very clear that um, aid and foreign su and, uh, support will be tied to LGBT. So I want you colleagues to follow what our challenge as members of parliament is. We know that uh, as a country we are going through economic challenges. And we know that um, uh, uh, the U.S. remains one of the largest bilateral partners for Zambia. They give us so much aid every year. Now in this particular case, Believing that President Haka in the Hichilema is going to maintain the position, his position on LGBT, America is likely to withdraw support on account of that. Knowing that President Haka in the Hichilema is likely to maintain his position on the relations between Zambia and Russia, Zambia and China, this will again affect the relationship between Zambia and the U.S. In the event that the U.S. government decides to withdraw support, the support that they give to Zambia, we wanted to know as members of parliament, as the Minister of Finance put measures in place to ensure that, you know, there's continuity in government. So this is where the problem was. And as you could see, the, our friends in government were playing hide and seek. They were jumping and diving when it came to this summit. There was no need for all that circus. All we wanted were answers. It's our job to go back to our people because as leader of opposition, I was approached by members of parliament who were saying we are Christians and we are a Christian nation. We will not allow for a summit to come that will begin to promote and propagate LGBT rights. I had to go to the floor to find out what is the truth about this conference. And nobody was ready to provide those answers. Up to now, nobody, nobody has provided any answers. The answers were provided to themselves when they lock themselves in this room. So up to now, we are still in the dark as members from the left. So we want to say this. Hey, President Naka in the Hichilema, you've made it very clear that you're against LGBT rights. You've also told the Zambian people that you continue strengthening the relations between Zambia and Russia and Zambia and China. What we want to know, we want you to come out very clearly to the Zambian people whether you will restate these positions to our visitors, being the Vice President of the U.S., uh, Kamala Harris, and also that uh, during that conference, you will ensure that you make our position known, especially that you are co-hosting uh, uh, that summit with other countries that um, espouse these liberal policies. So we want our government to come out very clear on this particular aspect. We are not in any way, as was earlier alleged, aiming to disrupt uh, government operations. No, what we just need are answers. Government must come out very clearly. The game of hide and seek, jumping and diving, should come to an end so that we're given a clear position on these uh, very important matters. Yes, so when we, the Comrade Kalalo talked about um, uh, debt restructuring, it's actually connected to what is happening because most likely we are, we are likely to lose some support from the U.S. once we maintain our position on LGBT and indeed our relations with Russia and China. It's high time we started thinking about how we are going to go forward you know, regarding uh, uh, the compensating for the support that may be withdrawn uh, as a result of our principled position and stand on those two items. Yes, so um, those, are, those are an issue to do with um, Comrade uh, Munia Zulu and Honorable uh, Fuve who came out and brought out some information that should have been of interest to Anti-Corruption Commission. We want the Anti-Corruption Commission to treat the information that came from Comrade Fube and Munia Zulu as a raw material. Let them, use that, let, let them use that information 
to, to, to in, investigate. <coughs> what is very disturbing is that um, Comrade Musokotwani and Comrade Milupi were accused <coughs> in their individual capacities. They decided to use government machinery to respond. They started using government letterheads to respond. No, no, no. They should respond as individuals. They should not use government employees, government machinery to respond, because the accusations were at individual level. And it's not the first time. It's not the first time, as Honorable Kampiong observed, our ministers were accused day in, day out. Our friends in the opposition then were even more dramatic. When Comrade Ronald Chitotela stands up to speak, they all walked out. Not that Honorable Chitotela was convicted by any court of law. No. Just on mere suspicion and allegation. We are surprised that there's been so much excitement up to head of state level when similar allegations have been made on their ministers. We expect the fight against corruption to be implemented in a much more transparent manner. It's not the first time that we are seeing the head of state rushing to intervene in a process that should have been left purely to the Anti-Corruption Commission. When the Foreign Affairs Minister, Comrade Stemi Kakubo, was seen carrying a very heavy uh, a, a carrier bag, a very heavy carrier bag, because colleagues, you know the difference, even in terms of shape and weight, when you're carrying calendars and when you're carrying something else. So the people that reported were very sure that uh, that carrier bag was indeed very heavy. Looking at how Comrade Kaku was carrying it to the car. And when they blew the whistle, the president merely made a call to this gentleman, asking him what he was doing carrying such a heavy bag with calendars in it. Is that how we're going to fight corruption? No, no. We thought the president should have been a bit more thorough in investigating why that carrier bag was so heavy, leaving the Chinese house <laughs> at some awkward hour, not in the manner that the president uh, in attack of that particular matter. <laughs> you also know that there was a letter that was circulating from one of the contractors who alleged that one of the ministers was soliciting for a bribe in form of a vehicle, which was a Mercedes, a, 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 a G wagon, and indeed some cash. What happened to that? There's been no follow-up. There was commitment from the contractor by way of writing. The contractor wrote on their letterhead to say, your minister was soliciting for a G-Wagon and some cash. What happened? The president picked up the phone and said, is it true you wanted a blue or black uh, G-Wagon? And the minister said no. And that was the end of that investigation. So we can't fight corruption that way. I think that um, this fight, ag uh, fight against corruption could be done in a much more transparent manner. So what Comrade, um, what Comrade Munia Zulu and Honorable Fube did should form as a raw material for Anti-Corruption Commission. I would advise that His Excellency the President stays away you know, from uh, that process until a report is indeed rendered. Uh, Comrade uh, Chisanga referred to such an instrument, uh, 1123, something that we objected because it took all these agencies under office of the President. And I think that is why the, the, the progress on, um, uh, on, on, on uh, uh, corruption is, is sluggish. Now, when you look at all these challenges that we are having, ranging from um, uh, uh, LGBT, um, geopolitical relations, the fight against corruption, the stalemate in debt restructuring, it has now prompted, it has prompted the clergy, like Bishop um, uh, Archbishop Mpundu this morning, has called for the resignation of the president. He has called for the resignation of President Haka in the Hichilema because he believes the man that we have in the seat may not be able to take us into new frontiers. <clears throat> you realize that most of the governance is now subcontracted to people like Tony Blair and his friends and other businessmen. The reason why the clergy are calling for the resignation of the president is that governance has now been subcontracted. State House is now occupied by strangers to whom the president has decided to subcontract the governance of this country. 
Ladies and gentlemen, countrymen and women, I want to remind you that we went to elections. Zambians went to elections and voted for the president. We expect the president to be able to take strong decisions, bold decisions, that to improve the lives of the Zambian people. We don't expect the president to subcontract that governance and begin to take advice from interested parties like uh, Comrade Tony Blair, taking instructions from Tony Blair. If at all there were other agreements, uh, prior arrangements or agreements that were made before the elections, we want to advise the president there is a way that you can vacate or come out of those agreements. You have to inform your friends that the Zambian people are demanding that um, you govern in a certain way and do not allow a situation where you continue to govern on their instructions. The interests of the Zambian people must be put first. The reason why we've seen a lot of problems on the Copper Belt and nothing going on in, in the mines is because these friends that have been subcontracted to govern have not yet made up their minds. Or they are trying to, to create a desperate situation for Mopani and KCM so that they can buy those mines for a song. They do not care about the plight of the Zambian people and what is happening to the Zambian people in the meantime, but they are merely looking out for their interests. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a long day. Uh, I think that uh, uh, I will end there and, uh, you know, thank you uh, most sincerely for your patience and resilience to have waited to, you know, uh, listen to the members of parliament. I thank you very much.